Welcome to Joy for the Journey, a worship service television ministry presented by your friends at the First Baptist Church of Mattoon, Illinois. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I always look forward to Sunday for many reasons, but one thing that happens when I come to church is that God renews me. Now, God's with us always. You agree with that? Say amen. Thank you. Um, We need to be renewed. I need to be renewed on a daily basis, not just on Sunday, as we look at the state of the world and the state of the nation. Uh, I don't see a lot of positive things. But here's what God says in the scripture in his book called the Bible. And you probably know this scripture. Fear not. He says that. Fear not not. Our God is the truth. His truth does not change from day to day, from year to year, from decade to decade. Do not fear tomorrow. He also says, I am with you always. You agree with that? So, you may be concerned, but that's not have fear. Fear only makes us freeze. Fear ages us. Fear does not let us enjoy the good things in life. Do not fear. Amen? Amen. I have a few announcements. The prayer focus is on jam pack. Members and friends hospitalized. Rory Munson is a patient in St. Francis, Peoria. Please be in prayer for Roy and Janie uh, that he might be healed. God might touch him and heal him with a miracle or through doctors. The rosebud today, and this is always exciting, the rosebud today is to announce the birth of a daughter Josie Lynn Dallas to Matthew and Jenna Dallas. Amen. Josie joins proud big brother Landon along with maternal grandparents John and Terry Spitz, maternal great-grandparents Dan and Marilyn Coleman, numerous uncles, aunts, and cousins. And congratulations to that family. There are a few air conditioning units 
removed from the educational wing. They are available for purchase for $50 each. Contact the church office if you are interested. And uh, something I look forward to every year is the announcement of Peaches, Peaches. You have been asking, and we are selling a half peck for $17, $8 of which will be divided between One Stop Community Christmas and Relay for Life. Orders must be placed by August 9th. That's August 9th. Your orders must be placed. And peaches will be ready mid to late August. Order, envelope, order envelopes are being mailed in your beacons, and other envelopes are at the back table at the Welcome Center. That's in the Welcome Center. Shop at Rural King and support our church. Bring your Rural, rural King receipts for purchases made between August 2nd through August 15th to the church office and we will receive 10%. Receipts need to be turned in to the office by August the 23rd. If you are having trouble social distancing in the sanctuary, please remember that there is a screen set up in the fellowship hall where the service will be simulcast and seats are set up and waiting for you. So there's a place to go if you're not uncomfortable with the sanctuary or if you're not comfortable with the sanctuary. That being said, would you please bow? Our gracious Lord and Savior, we, we trust you, we love you with all our hearts, and we want to follow your word, we want to do what you tell us to do. And in this moment, we have no fear because you are in charge. You are with us. You tell us, I am your strength and your shield, and we believe. Be with us now, Lord, as we begin to worship. May, may we be filled with the Holy Spirit as we worship and experience the joy of a closeness to you and a closeness to your Son and a closeness to the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Be with us now as we lift up praise and song in Jesus Christ's name and amen.
please join me in the call to worship, Luke 21, 28. Stand up up and and lift lift up up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Now, before we start the chorus, why don't you turn around and wave to somebody behind you or beside you? That way we'll have a little bit of greeting from a distance. It's good to see everybody here today. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you are still doing. Lord, we thank you for the offerings that have come in. And Lord, we just pray that we will use them to further your kingdom here in Mattoon, in our country, and around the world. 
Lord, thank you for the faithfulness of our people. And Lord, most of all, thank you for the faithfulness for us that you have for us. We know you are always there, guiding, directing, comforting, and loving. In your precious name we pray. Amen. kids got an opportunity to practice wearing a mask. That was funny. Um, I, I really don't, I'm really glad I'm not a teacher <laughs> right now. Um, but um, we had a great time. The kids were thrilled to be here. They were thrilled to be together. They had a great time and they learned lots of stuff. So um, instead of having the kids come up and try to share the things, we did the video so that they got an opportunity to say the scriptures and they got an opportunity to, to just be in front of you so that you could see their lovely shining faces. Um, so thank you for everyone who helped. The, we could not have done it without the leaders. Thanks parents for bringing your kids and letting us have this opportunity to have a few kids. It was a different VBS than I've ever been to before, but it was a blessing. So thank you so much. And before I go on, um, Drew, would you come over here, please? So um, most of you may already know that Drew and Morgan McClellan and their family will be moving to Texas tomorrow. And um, that is not something that we planned, but sometimes God's plans are not exactly our plans. And we um, just need to trust and we just need to pray for this family as they go into their next ministry. And so um, I, I just mentioned this at the 8 o'clock, but he's, he didn't get this at every service. So there's a, there's a small gift from your church family. And um, it's uh, here. There, we'll bump elbows. So um, since neither of us are wearing a mask. So um, I uh, just wanted to give us an opportunity to thank them for their service. Um, for some of you that may not know, Drew and Morgan are here with our ABY every Sunday night, and then he also took the minister of visitation um, as, as a, a job earlier. Is that the right title? Okay. And, uh, and outreach. And so um, we will be looking to fill 
some spots. So pray for us during that, but he has um, been able to be called to another calling, and we just um, want to give him all our best and keep that family in our prayers. So thank you very much for your service and for everything that you have done. They weren't here long enough, but we'll give them up. So we will miss them, but we'll give them up. Many of you know the wonderful old hymn, Precious Memories. Boy, there's a lot of you that probably... How many of you have, have not sang this? And it's okay if you haven't. Because I didn't see a lot of the young people's hands go up. Let, let me just say something, because you know I have to say something. Uh, how many of you grew up in this church? Okay. Some of you just don't want to raise your hands up because I know you were grew, you did grow up in this church or are growing up. Okay, I should. How many of you are growing up in this church? There comes the young people's hands. Yeah, it's lack of communication. Okay. Well, I grew up in a little Baptist church down on the Cumberland County line, and and was in that church every Sunday. Uh, and one thing that perplexed me from a long, for a long time, I wasn't a child to ask a lot of questions because I thought it looked bad if I didn't know the answer, you know. I thought it made me, I'd sound stupid if I didn't know something. So anyway, I held off for a long time. Uh, but I noticed two old farmers would come up as, as we were singing the last hymn, and, and they, would, they would kneel like this. I have to show you. Now, I'd never seen any farmers kneel around the fields or anything. I'm sure they were, in their own mind, they were kneeling. But these two gentlemen would come down, and they looked very old to me, but hey, I was only seven or eight. And for a long time, I didn't ask my mother this. Why do those two guys come down and kneel and pray? She says, they're praying for the salvation of this congregation, and their big focus is they're praying for you. And they're praying for every young person in that little church, it's probably a church of, I don't know, 50 to 80 people at that time. And that's what they did. I never knew a Sunday that those two men didn't come down and kneel and pray during that whole last hymn. And they brought a lot of kids to the Lord through that. Now, it took a longer time for me, you know, I'm late maturing. It took. 29 years for me to get <laughs> here. But part of it was because those gentlemen were praying. And, and some of the old saints in this church who are now gone prayed for me to be here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for you who are out there and representing men like those farmers who are praying for the young people to come to Christ. Amen. So this is a song. And about precious memories. Precious memories Unseen angels Sent from somewhere to my soul How they linger ever near me And the sacred past unfold Precious memories how they linger, how they ever flood my soul in the stillness of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold, precious Father. Loving mother, fly across the lonely years, and old home 
scenes of my childhood in fond memory appear. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul in the stillness of the midnight precious sacred scenes unfold Amen
So the world is constantly changing. And one thing that hasn't changed is the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So because of that, every time there has been any kind of affliction, any kind of war, any kind of famine, the gospel has gone forward. Here's some examples. Fanny Crosby was blind from birth. She wrote 8,000 hymns, including Blessed Assurance, which is in our hymnal. Horatio Spafford lost his four-year-old son in the great Chicago fire, which ruined him financially. Then, after trying to return to England to regain their wealth, plans changed. He held back, and the seed took four of his daughters. Then he wrote, It is well with my soul. Paul himself was in prison in Rome when he wrote this letter to, to the church in Ephesus. And to make it a little more today, during the cholera pandemic, C.H. Spurgeon, who had got cholera in 1853, in 1854 when the pandemic spread and it was all over London, Spurgeon wrote, Fear to die, thank God I do not. The cholera may come again next summer. Pray it may not. But if it does, it matters not to me. And I will toil and visit the sick by night and by day until I drop. And if it takes me, sudden death is sudden glory. So what does that mean? It means that the gospel is able to spread regardless of our worldly circumstances because of people who keep the gospel and take it with them where they go. People who understand that Christ didn't come to take away the afflictions of our daily life. The sorrow, the sadness, the sickness. Christ came to give his life for that what was dead can now live. That we will be returned to fellowship with the Father for all eternity. And that is the message that Paul is reminding the church in Ephesus. Stay the course. Don't be complacent. Keep your eyes on heaven. Kim and I talked about a month ago about this service, and I asked for three songs. And all of, them, all of these songs are about focus. What a day that will be. Keeps our eyes on the prize going forward. Revive Us Again, which we'll sing in a minute, is strength for today. And Precious Memories is the completion of both of those songs. As a matter of fact, the last verse of Precious Memories says, As I travel down life's pathway, know not what the years may hold, but as I wander, hope grows fonder, precious memories lead me home. So this is where I stray off a little, and you're going to have to bear with me because there's more of you in here that I have to talk about than I did in the 8 o'clock. Um, this is where I choked up a little bit, so if I do, bear with me. Um, when I was a kid, people talked about their home church, their home church, their home church, and I never really understood what that meant other than, okay, this is the church I grew up in. Uh, but in January last year, you all proved what that meant. Um, Morgan and I walked in, and immediately we were, we were welcomed back in. Um, I fulfilled a lifelong goal of sitting in a back row over here. Um, I told 8 o'clock I used to sit in the third pew there uh, during chantel choir practice and mock, mock artists' hand motions as we went along. Um, many of you in here are the reason I'm standing here right now. Melissa, you were my choir instructor. Myrna with the puppets. Artist isn't in here, but I owe a lot to artists. Troy, every summer when I came back, you were teaching Sunday school in high school. Um, and if I asked the people that I was related to to stand up in here, most of you would have to stand up. So, um, so I won't do that. But like most of you who have been here a very long time, the empty spots in the pews, they aren't empty. My... Uh, Grandpa and Grandma Van Gundy sat right over there. Chuck and Barb Slavin sat right back there. We had the whole back row back there with my great-grandparents and my, my grandma and grandpa. The Sherline sat right back over there. All people that have, have gone on and have influenced probably every person in this sanctuary. And that is what a home church means. The ability to pick up where you left off at 10 years old, at 30 years old, is not something to be taken lightly, and it's not something that many people can say about a church. 
All right, back to my notes. There is a warning to be taken from the church in Ephesus. 34 years after Paul wrote the church in Ephesus, John wrote the church of Ephesus. And John wrote the words of Jesus Christ as found in Revelation chapter 2, verse 1, verse 1 through 7, and I'm going to read all those. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people that you have tested those who claim to be apostles, but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered, and you have endured hardships for my name, and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You've forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you've fallen and repent, and do the, do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you, remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolothians as much as I do. Whoever has ears, let, him, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of, of life, which is in the paradise of God. It's easy to lose focus. It's easy to do everything right in practice and do everything wrong in eternity. So I ask as we plow forward for another 150 plus years that we keep our first love and we maintain. I am going to do something that I didn't do last sermon because most of the high school youth group is here. Um, you all have an advantage that you don't understand in this church. Having left here at 10 years old and then come back 20 years later, this is a very special place. I know talking to all of you, you all understand how special this place is. And it's special because they don't lose sight of the first love. So I charge all of you now, as you go forward, as you go on to school, as you come back, to remember that you're part of what's going to make this go on for another 150 plus years. And remember that these people are waiting for you to come back. I never understood how quick time passes until you have children of your own. Um, my favorite song of all time, and this is going to really be weird, is Mac the Knife by Bobby Darin. And it's not the lyric. The lyric's fun. It's about a gangster. But it, it's not the lyric. It's the song. It's the melody behind the the music behind the song. The song kicks off with a quick drum drum intro, and it never stops. It, sl it starts slowly. It progresses through. So think of that as the beginning verse. Okay, we're setting up your life, and then as soon as you graduate high school, everything kicks off, and it never slows down. And it goes faster. But does anybody remember how Mac the Knife ends? It just stops. There's no fade out. There's no roll. It just stops. So where we end here, the song will continue forward. I'm going to leave you with, a, with a, a thought here. When I was in high school, we had a men's Bible study, and we had it twice a week. We had it on Monday evenings and at 5.30 on Wednesday mornings before school. And it was an old, old Baptist preacher who came in. His name was Waitus Harrell. And every Wednesday, he would say the same thing before we left. If your neighbor's house was on fire, you would do everything you could to warn your neighbor, to bang on the door, to get him out. Well, folks, the house is on fire and your neighbors died. It's time to, to step forward and give, show them the love of Christ and give them an eternal blessing and eternal glory. I chose Revive Us Again for the last hymn for a reason. I want you, as we're singing it, to, to think of it as a prayer. Think of it as a prayer for yourself. Think of it as a prayer for your neighbor, for your community, for your country, for your state, for the world. And really take the words to the hymn at, at heart and go forward. Um, we're going to do all four verses because I don't see any reason not to. Um, and I really want you to take it into, into heart. And if you're sitting here and you know your house is on fire, 
and you haven't accepted the Christ, please, I, I, it's so hard not to give an altar call. If you've accepted, if you have to make a decision, just come sit over here and we'll figure out some social distancing way because it's more important that we see you in eternity than the disease takes you now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you this morning, Lord, and we just ask for your continued blessing on this church, Lord, and the people in it. This is a special place, Lord, and I thank you for the, the ability to belong here. Lord, I also pray that you keep this church focused and you, you remind it of the, the teachings of Ephesus and how a church can go if not kept focus on you, Lord. I ask that if there's anybody here with a deep prayer concern, Lord, you know that concern, Lord. Be with them. Comfort, guide, strengthen. Lord, I also ask if there's somebody here that's not sure about their eternal salvation, Lord, that they make that decision today for the next breath isn't promised. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. year and a half has been absolutely amazing. Um, I honestly never dreamed in my life that I would be standing right here doing what I'm doing right now. Uh, any of you all that knew me as a kid probably would agree with that. Um, the, for all of you all that entrusted us with your, with your kids, it's, it's been an amazing year and a half. Um, and in all honesty, leaving was never the plan. Um, it was I woke up in the middle of the night one night and I was told to check my phone and I checked my phone and this job was there and I applied and they accepted. Uh, it's got to be some kind of divine movement and uh, I personally have read the book of Jonah and I know how it goes if you don't go to Nineveh, so uh, I'm going to go to Nineveh. Um, um, as that being said, the door is always open for us. If you, I mean, we're 30 minutes from the beach, so come on down. Um, this church means everything to me. Uh, I told them in my interview for the director of outreach and evangelism that the sun rises and falls as far as I'm concerned at First Baptist Church in Mattoon, Illinois. Um, and I mean that. 
um, my daughter was baptized here, I was baptized here, and actually it was, it's really awkward how that worked out because I was bad, I came forward two weeks before my eighth birthday and she came forward two weeks before her eighth birthday. I had a longer walk, we used to sit in the back, so, <laughs> but, uh, so again, thank you all so much for the last year and a half. Uh, I pray for you all, each and every one of you every day and I will continue to as we go forward. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you now, Lord, and we just thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. And as we go forward, Lord, we ask that your peace that passes all understanding go with us, Lord. We ask for protection, for strength, for comfort, for guidance as we go the week ahead. And bring us all back safely to this place next week. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching Joy for the Journey, a presentation of worship from the First Baptist Church of Mattoon, Illinois. To learn more about the ministries of our church, learn how you can join us in worship, or to support this television ministry, contact us at 1804 South 9th Street, Mattoon, Illinois, 61938. You can also visit us on the World Wide Web at www.joyforthejourney.org. First Baptist Church, a church where friends are made.